Just one, two, three, four, five. So it's so clearly moving in your direction. Well, I feel good about it. I'm yeah. working hard. Political journalists scour the country days before the 2010 midterm elections. What do you say to people who say Congressman Dingell is kind of a symbol of what's wrong with Washington? It was his dad's seat, and it's now he's been there since 1955. Reporters scramble to stay on top of the story. We follow three of them. Don Gagne of NPR News. The thing that sets political reporting apart is the degree to which everybody is paying attention. Mark Leibovich of the New York Times. My challenge is to try to get to the gap between what is true and what they are trying to present is true. He just didn't need to find himself in this position. And Alex Burns of Politico. I'm a competitive person. I like moving fast. I don't think that I would be happy writing um, you know, working for five days on a story and then having it published five days after that. Each has his own method, but they share the same mission, to break through the artifice of politics. Gagne's headed to a debate. He's intrigued. Democratic Congressman John Dingell, who's won every race since 1955, is facing his most serious challenger to date. It seemed like a, a pretty easy, self-contained story. Yeah, you pick an event, in this case it was a debate. You go in, you attend the debate. But there's a problem. Gagne gets word that the Dingell campaign has banned all recording equipment. Okay. Uh, okay. DVDs will be handed out the next afternoon, but Gagne needs it much earlier to make his deadline. Basically what it demonstrates is that even that cut and dried story where you think everything I need is going to be here in this room, um, there are surprises. If I don't get it until tomorrow, right. we're, then we're days late okay. on the story and, okay. Trusting he'll get the debate audio somehow, Gagne focuses on other elements he needs for his story. Great. I've been bouncing around Ooh. doing congressional. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so can I talk to you briefly? My name's sure. Don. I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. Yeah, let me just, uh, I'm just going to do it. Check, check, check. Just like this. Uh, let, let me get your name right on here. I'm Mike Horwood. Uh, just quick background on yourself. How old are you? What do you do for a living? 51 years old. I'm self-employed. Uh, more and more people work. seem to know the talking points from a particular uh, party or talk show host or TV commentator. Healthcare is not a right. Healthcare is a privilege. Good morning about the Starbucks. How are you today? Hi, good. Uh, could I get a um, just a grande uh, bulb coffee? Leibovich spent yesterday reporting on Arkansas Senator Blanche Lincoln, who's trailing badly in the polls. County courthouse made out of. This year I sort of decided that I would want to do an archetype of someone who had been basically written off and abandoned, um, but an incumbent. I needed to get readers to care about her and care about, not, not so much her, like her, her soul and her humanity, but, you know, her, her office and her, and her position. He needs more material to complete his story, but he's got to file the top half by noon today. If he misses his deadline, 748 words. the story has no chance to make the most treasured real estate in journalism. The front page of the Sunday New York Times. When people wake up in the morning, they want to uh, like roll over in bed, look at their Blackberry and see, okay, here's everything that I missed overnight or didn't see yesterday, or here's what's going to happen today. If that means that I have to wake up earlier in the morning in order to uh, like package the news in, in a way that's convenient for those readers, like, I think that's worth doing. Burns is always on. By 6 a.m., he sent out a report of what happened overnight. By 9, he's in the office reporting on what's happening that day. He's a buzz machine. 
Today's assignment is a story on three candidates who spent a combined quarter of a billion dollars of their own money on their campaigns. If you're not the first person to make that observation, you might as well be the last person to make that observation because if people have heard it in one place, they're not going to want to hear it again and again and again. Per capita, uh, McMahon has spent about twice as much as Whitman. Burns drives today's 24-hour news cycle. That's one of a number of uh, interesting house races around the country where you have the, the same two candidates that faced off last time. For someone who wants to cover the midterm election, they can't just you know, pick a couple races that they think are the most important ones. That you know, if we cover the you know, Kentucky Senate race and uh, the Nevada Senate race, like those are sort of the bellwethers we need to know. Like you need to know all of them, um, and you need to know the most important things happening in all of them. I um. <laughs> Check the my number and then redid the lead. So there's like a new version. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I've probably written about 800 words. Uh, I'm going to an event now. I'm sort of going to be in and out of events for the next few hours. We are going to win this prize. Oh, you see your head over there now. You're going to walk or drive? Oh no, we're going to drive. Okay. I was going to say, you can, that's not, you're not work, you're not like dressed for ag fair stuff. So while I'm walking with you, anything changed appreciably in your uh, outlook on anything in the last 24 hours since I visited with you last? I still think we're going to win. Okay. <laughs> There's a surprise. Rebovich savors the serendipity of politics. The value of being on the ground is everything. My job is to sort of break news within paragraphs, which is to get people sort of saying, huh, either I didn't know that, I didn't think that, I hadn't remembered that. Ma'am, yes. hi, could I get your name? I'm, I'm with the newspaper, the New York Times. Nancy, say. I'm not writing wire stories. I'm not, you know, competing with 10 other people to be first on this detail or to blog that she just attack John Boozman in this new yeah, ad. Yeah, because I probably have like three, you know, hundred, four hundred more words just from this afternoon, which obviously you can cut, but it sort of, it, it winds up the 24 hours nicely, so. Those 300 words did run in a story on the front page of the Sunday New York Times. Audio file. Here's yep. is it. Mm -hmm. CCC audio. Yep. And is that, uh. That's the DVD. Did you want both of them? If I can take both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There Excellent. Thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. it. Okay. For Gagne, the sound is everything. You need to hear voices. In the John Dingle story, we heard, you know, the, the, the frail, almost weak, you know, kind of strained voice of, of John Dingle. We then healthcare. heard, in contrast, the crisp, uh, clear, strong voice of his 52-year-old opponent. We need to start over and fix the problems that are there. All of that combines to have the listener feel like they're not just, um, they're not just getting facts. They're, they're getting a certain feeling. Do you think the longest member or serving member ever will survive in the lead? Uh, no, we let's tighten up the lead because they're going to have to show up. Okay, so I'll keep it at the back then. Check, check, okay. test, test, it's a live. Test, 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 test. This is good. This is good. Test. Steel test. supporters, including some who've been active in the Steel supporters, including some who've been active in the Tea Party movement, say John Dingle represents everything that's I gotta change this. In the Tea Party movement. Twenty times he's been reelected with more than 70% of the vote. His closest race ever was in the big GOP year of 1994, when he got 59%. Through all this time, John Dingle's signature issue has been health care. Its passage this year was a personal triumph. He spoke about that last night during a debate at Monroe County Community College. I have the curious belief that health care is a right and not a privilege. 